My name is Ibrahim Abdul Karim. I'm 31 years old and I'm from West London. I was originally brought up on a White City estate in West London. I went to Wormholt Primary School. Um, I have four brothers, two sisters. I'm the oldest of six. Um, my father left me, left the house when he was very young. So my mum raised all of us by herself, a single parent. Um, at the age of 15, I was kicked out of home um, and made to be homeless. And I spent the next four years sleeping on the streets. So I used to sleep in cardboard boxes, squats, um, abandoned buildings, etc. And it was during that period of my life, um, in between well, 15 and 20 when I was homeless, that I um, embraced Islam. At, at school, I wouldn't say I was a particularly bad kid, um, but I did get into a lot of trouble. Um, and, you know, getting into trouble at school, getting into trouble at home, um, I believe that it got to a point where my mother just had enough um, and being a single parent, you know, trying to raise, turn boys into men, I think for a woman is particularly hard. Um, uh, a young man really does need the support of his father um, and because I didn't have that, I believe that played a burden on my mother um, and at the age of 15 my mother kicked me out. Um, and forced me to fend for myself from a very early age. Um, I then embarked on a journey of sleep homelessness. So I slept rough. I slept in cardboard boxes behind the Savoy Hotel um, in the Strand. Um, we used to walk around and look for empty buildings um, or properties to let. Um, and we would um, get in and squat, basically, um, and squat legally because we had squatters rights um, and the council had to take us to court to get us out. Um, in between that, the odd night shelter, hostel, etc. Um, being homeless is, is one of the worst things I think a, a human being can experience. Um, and I mean not homeless for one night or two nights, I mean permanently homeless. Permanently have nowhere to sleep at night, nowhere to wash, nowhere to change your clothes, nowhere to eat. Um, you know, I mean, every human being and animal that lives on this planet has some type of shelter, you know, you know whether it, you know, the birds have their nest, you know, the lion has its den, the tortoise has its shell, you know, and when you're a young, you know, teenager and you have n no f roof over your head and you haven't got the support of your, your parents, you know, um, it can be very, very, very hard um, and um, very trying as well, you know, because not everybody makes it. You know, I've seen a lot of um, young homeless children who, some of them are still homeless today. Some of them turn to a life of drugs, alcohol, crime, you know, and when you're uh, 15 years old and you're homeless, it's very easy to go down particular roads, i.e. a life of crime, you know, get caught in, into the system where you're going in and out of jail for petty crime. Um, and it's tough, it's tough. I mean, I think you have to have a lot of resilience, a lot of tenacity, and you have to have a particular mind frame not to get caught up in all of those pressures and actually survive that and still be able to make something positive and constructive of your life. When you're homeless, you got to eat, you know? So I, I got myself into a little bit of trouble, um, you know, a few scrapes with the law, a few misdemeanors. Um, but once again, I would say that was part and parcel with the fact that I had, I was homeless and I was sleeping rough and I was on the streets and I had no means to eat. Um, you know, I, I also never finished school, you know? so. Officially, I have no formal qualifications, no GCSEs. But if you're, but just because I didn't finish school doesn't mean I'm not an intelligent person. I, just because I was made homeless at the age of 15, I never got the opportunity to finish school. Had I sat my exams, I think, well, I know I would have done very well. Um, and I think what's important, especially when you're young um, and you're faced with hardship, whether it be you're born into a family, um, 
a, a, a poor family or whether later on down the line you get faced with some major adversity like your parents split up, um, you grow up in a single um, parent household or you ever find yourself homeless. I think what's most important is the mentality that you adopt because it's that mentality that makes a decade on you either be a company director or a decade on you're sitting in a jail cell um, you know, with a 15 year um, criminal background. So I think the choices we make and the mind frame that we put ourselves into is very important. Um, it's easier said than done because um, often enough we view the world based on our previous experiences. So if we've had a particularly um, tormenting childhood, we then start to perceive the world in, in not necessarily a particularly positive light moving forward but if we can unhook those mental blockages and always look at the glass as half full as supposed to be in half empty it doesn't matter what you're faced with what type of adversity you will be able to come out the other side um, and and be successful okay i'm just at my local calf just chilling with a couple of the man them just about to eat some food before we head over to the gym i'm here with roscoe dion renarco you know, Roscoe is a youth man that I've watched grow up. We've known each other for over 10 years. Dion, um, we're gym buddies. We, we, we train together as well as I've trained him in the past. And then Renarco, um, old school once again, one of the men them that I've known from around the ways from years. I was about 16 years old. And I was walking through Shepherd's Bush Market. Um, and there was a um, Muslim guy named Suleiman used to sell incense, like sweet fragrances. Um, and I had, I had had a fight and I was walking around with two black eyes. So I, I looked pretty punched up, but you should see what the other guy looked like. Um, and as I walked past his stall, he said something very profound to me. He got my attention. It was, he said something in relation to the fact that I had a black eye, but he said it in a very profound way. And we spoke, we spoke struck up a friendship um, and we used to, I often, as I passed that store, used to stop, spend time, talk, reason. There was always a few brothers around the store. Um, that was my first experience of Islam, you know, just talking to um, a few elder, um, elder Muslims who had, you know, been in Islam for quite some time, um, was quite knowledgeable on their, um, not only on their um, knowledge of Islam, but just quite knowledgeable in terms of worldly affairs. Um, and as I passed the store um, almost every day, we'd stop, we'd have a 15, 20 minute, half an hour conversation um, about Islam, you know, and then I'd go away, I'd think about some of the things they had told me. I'd always come back with um, questions because I was curious, but it's because I wanted to understand more and um, know more about Islam. I was brought up in a Christian background. Um, you know, my parents are from the Caribbean, Jamaica. Um, and as most West Indian families have it, you know, we, we, we t typically tend to be of Christian backgrounds. So, you know, I used to go to church on a Sunday. Um, I used to go to Sunday school. I, I got taught the Bible. In fact, I actually know the Bible quite well. You know, I, I know my Bible inside out. And the fact that I got brought up in a Christian background and went to church every Sunday, um, went to Sunday school and got taught the Bible in quite detail, made me understand Islam a lot better than had I not been brought up in a Christian background. Um, and a common mistake people make with religion is they, they compare the two like they're at odds. You know, you're a Muslim, I'm a Christian. Where in fact, if you understand Islam and you understand Christianity, it's just one continuous journey, one continuous story. So at the age of 16, 17, being brought up in a particularly Christian background, and that's all I knew, um, being exposed to um, Muslims and speaking and having a relationship where we could actually sit down and conversate freely and share knowledge with, un with one another made me understand Islam in a lot more detail. And for me, it was a natural progression in terms of spiritual progression and um, knowledge of self for me to become a Muslim because it, 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 it fitted. 
Um, and key for me was the, the belief system. Ashadu Allah, la illallah. Um, because all the religions I had ever studied, there was always, either with, Christ, with Hindis, they, they, they have loads of different gods. With Christians, they, have, they believe in the Trinity. And it goes on. Whereas Islam is the only religion I've come across where the concept of one God exists. And that God has no partners, no um, fathers, no mothers, no sons, just the concept of one God. And it was just clean and pure, and that's what I believed in. I've always believed in God. And now I'm speaking to these brothers who are saying to me, well, yeah, we believe in one God. So to me, it just made natural, logical, rational sense from that point of view. Um, and then when, we look, when I looked at other things, Islam actually has an answer for every situation that you will come across in your life. Yeah, and that's what a lot of people um, are unaware of, you know. Whether we talk about marriage, whether we talk about divorce, whether we talk about adultery, drugs, alcohol, you know, down to little situations like someone owing you money. Islam has a, a, a scenario for that. You know, if someone owes you money, this is how you go about it, you know. And that, to me, just made it complete because it wasn't just all right, a religion, it was actually a way of life. You know, and a very humanitarian way of life. Yo, fam. We link up at the gym, yeah? Bless up. Peace. Yeah. This is my brethren, Renarko. Um, we grew up in the same area together, northwest London. Um, we also worked together back in the days. Yeah, religion has played a lot of role. I mean, he won't sit there and, and bang on about his religion or try and influence anybody um, that doesn't want to be influenced. But at the same time, his, his lifestyle um, has changed in a sense where he's, I'm able to relate to him um, in a better way. Um, it's changed his mind state, as I said. So he's able to bring his, what's the word I'm looking for? His life experiences as well as re his religion to the plate. I could say um, straight off that he's, he's more um, driven, more determined, um, more, more given in a sense where he wants to help his friends or anybody that he feels he can help and make it a little bit better for them. As long as, you know, he likes that person, he will do. And his, his, his mind state has changed totally. He's thinking on much bigger levels. And he's very inspiring towards myself because he's always encouraging and showing that there's more than where we live. And there's much bigger things out there, much bigger goals that you can achieve. From a child, I've always been quite a very spiritual person. I've always believed in God um, and I've always been a, a, an individual who likes to have knowledge of self and understand where am I coming from and I wasn't really trying to make my mind up whether there was a God or not because I already come to the conclusion that there's definitely a God, I believe in God but I wanted to know which religion is best serving God so to speak you know and it could be that there's more than one you know, people worshipping God in different ways, but I just wanted to know the truth. Um, and through the conversations I had had with um, the Muslim brothers that I was um, in contact with at that time, um, and through, through the interpretations and understandings that they gave me of Islam, Islam, it felt right. It felt... It just felt right. Mentally, physically, spiritually... Logically, rationally. You know, because I asked rational questions and it was a very, it's a very rational religion. You know, I mean, there, I don't want to name any in particular, but there are lots of little sub-religions or cults that come out with some very weird concepts and ideologies that you couldn't fool a six-year-old with if you're half intelligent. But everything that um, the brothers used to say to me, from a, just a rational point of view, it made sense. A logical point of view it made sense and like I said Islam deals with every scenario and every scenario that you would come across in your everyday life it has a logical rational explanation to, to, to counter that 
So from that point of view, after I had asked a certain amount of questions through curiosity um, and challenged a number of things that was put to me in terms of the belief system, the five pillars of Islam, the fundamentals of Islam, everything was challenged from my point of view. I challenged and cross-examined and interrogated um, the brothers that was um, giving me dawah. But every attempt or cross-examination I gave them, the answers that they came back with were very fruitful. Um, so it got to a point where I was quite satisfied, you know, that this is a way of life that I would like to follow and embrace and take on. Um, so it was the 7th of November, 1997. Uh, I'll never forget that day. Um, I said I wanted to um, take my shahada and become a Muslim. Um, and there was a brother called Musa. He took me to Goot Street Mosque, um, back of Tottenham Court Road. Um, it was a Friday, because they were doing Jummah prayers. And I'd never been to a mosque before. So it was quite daunting and frightening and, you know, I wasn't sure what would happen and how it would happen. Um, but once again, when I talk about the rationality and the logic behind Islam, even how you embrace Islam and become a Muslim is quite simple. You know, you just bear witness that you believe in one God and there is no that God has no partners or associates or brothers or sisters or sons. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, ashhadu anna Muhammad abduhu. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, ashhadu anna Muhammad abduhu rasulullah. And that was it. Took my shahada after Juma prayers um, and I never looked back. I felt fulfilled, I felt whole. Um, I, I had clarity. Um, it was almost like my eyes were opened. I, I saw things differently. I had a better understanding of the world. And I think most importantly, I felt fulfilled, you know, because I see people in torment. And a lot of time I look at these people and I say, you need God in your life. You know, half the problems of this world will be solved. You know, people just are looking for ways to fulfill their life. Some people turn to drugs. Some people turn to alcohol. Some people turn to, women turn to prostitution. You know, people use all, a manner of things to stimulate yeah, and fulfill what's missing. And some people never find it. They just search and search and search. Um, and for me, I found what I was looking for. Normally I get up about five o'clock in the morning, um, out the house by six, um, at my first client's house by half six, I train him for an hour, half six to half seven. As I mentioned, I'm a body transformation specialist, so we go to clients' houses and we give them the exercise in their houses. Um, when I leave that, I normally head to another client's house, train them. Then I leave there, head to another client's house, train them. And most days I'm home by about 12, one. But from six in the morning till midday, personal training, come home, have some lunch, relax for a few hours, and then I'm back at the gym in the, um, in the afternoons. I've got clients at the gym, and then we do the boxing classes every single evening um, from six o'clock up to nine. Um, and then by the time I get out of there, some nights I even go straight to another client's house, train them from about half nine to ten, half ten. Don't get home till about 11. Go home, go sleep, wake up, do it all over again. Okay, now we're at my gym. Okay, I've been personal training for 10 years. Um, Muay Thai kickboxing um, for over 15 years. Um, I started as a personal trainer about 10 years ago. I've worked at all the major gyms in London. Fitness First, LA Fitness, Holmes Place. Personal trained out at the Marriott Hotel. Um, and four years ago, I set up my own facility. But also, um, in, during the day, the local young offenders teams, they send um, van loads of their children down to us. And these are kids that are um, getting in trouble with the police, um, getting in trouble um, committing crimes. Some of them are in and out of young um, institution um, units. And what we do is we deliver the ABA um, National Boxing Awards. 
okay? We deliver that not only down our facilities, but we also go into schools and community centres and we also deliver um, those services. And what it's really geared towards is um, using boxing as a way to instill skills like anger management, self-control, discipline, and other life skills. And we found that the children that we've worked with, we've seen amazing changes in terms of their behavior, their attitude, their contribution to society, you know, and also their, their get up and go, their, 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 their drive for life. Yeah, I want to, yeah, you want to store down here? Here, look, here. Shh, shh, here. Shh, shh, shh. Turn your waist, yeah? Right, try again. Shh, shh, that's it. Yeah, because you, you've got to be on target. There's no point in throwing shots if they're not on I point. think the that's biggest me. change that um, Islam has had on my life is it's given me a conscience. Um, I think twice before I do things because I understand there's a consequence. Um, and I believe that if I, if I wasn't a Muslim, I didn't believe in God, I would probably be a lot more of a notorious character. You know, I, I probably would do a lot more things and not care not care about people's feelings, not care about who I hurt in the process, you know. Um, I think it's made me less selfish as well. You know, I'm a very giving person, a very loving person, because my whole belief system is built around the fact that the more you give is the more you receive. The more you do for others, the more good seeds you sow is the more good fruits your tr tree will bear. So I believe that's probably the biggest change it's had in my life. If I had one thing to say to someone who was interested in Islam, it would have to be Kulhu Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad, Lam Yiladu Lam Yilad, Wa Lam Yakullahu Kufu Wan Ahad. Say he is Allah, the one and only, Allah, the eternal, the absolute. He begets not noisy, begotten, and there is none like unto him. Reason being, because until we grasp that concept, in our hearts, it doesn't make a difference if you drink or you smoke. It doesn't make a difference whether you're married or you're single. You know, I know many people who don't believe in God who are married, who don't drink, who don't smoke, don't go out partying, don't commit adultery. Most people in that community would say they're a very good person, never hurt a fly. But if you don't the, 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 the defining factor that separates a Muslim from a Christian or a Muslim from a Hindu or a Muslim from a Jew is Kulhu Allahu Ahad, say he is Allah the one and only. So that's where it started for me um, and that's what, that's what I would say to someone else.